Benadryl. So tonight we have a twofold purpose. First is several of our several of our um, SOS students will be leaving for Costa Rica Saturday morning. And this is our last week of Summer of Sunship. And it has been a great, great six weeks. And so I wanted to make sure that we gave them the opportunity to uh, preach short message. <laughs> they all stayed in the room. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> Proclaiming all that they've learned. <laughs> no, I, I would have had complete, total anarchy. No, no we're gonna we're gonna honor them tonight before you guys. So I appreciate you guys being here as their commencement family and audience tonight. And I wanted to give them an opportunity to share if they wanted to. And so I think they are. They have a few things prepared. It's your prayer. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things. We did spend six weeks focusing on who they are in the Father. That was our goal. Our goal was to establish their identities as sons and daughters of God in the Heavenly Father. And I think we did a great job of bringing out that identity in them and them allowing this to take place. And I think over the period of the six weeks, we watched them go from you know, a little bit apprehensive about sharing with one another, a little bit timid about really stepping out and sharing their hearts. Um, we did something pretty regularly called feedback arcs. For those of you that have been around some, especially in our core gathering the one time, we did feedback arcs where you have to stand in front of a group of your peers and you have a period of time to share on a subject and then the rest of your peers get to feed back to you their positive comments as well as their constructive criticism. And they did this several times and the goal wasn't just to get them to share. The goal was to really have them open up their hearts to who they really are. And the, the, the true representation of that was as their peers would respond back to them, hey, I still felt like you were closed, or I felt like you were still hiding some things. So as the six weeks went on, we watched more and more of that openness begin to take place. And um, I'm really proud of them. So Lauren Gabler is our first one. And, uh, can I tell the story about you? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. So we had a, I don't know if it was a morning or an afternoon, I think it was a morning, where I asked them all about in the third or fourth week, I said, okay, we've been through three or four weeks now. Is there something that you know that it's time to repent of? And we all we talked about the definition of repent. It means to change the way you think. And I, I meant it specifically about themselves. There's time, is there something that you've decided it's time to repent of this way of thinking about myself? and then walk a different way. So uh, and I thought this might be a half an hour exercise. It ended up being several hours where we even ministered to some people in the midst of it. And Lauren's was that, is this going to be part of your talk? No. Okay. She really repented of not feeling like she's important. Many times she would not share even when she had something to share. But every time she did share, and Ethan would say this several times, I can't wait for Lauren to share something because every time she does, it's powerful and it has a lot of insight in it. And so we did this little thing with her where we put a chair by her chair and then every time that she was going to share something, she'd have to stand up on the chair <coughs> and she'd have to start out before whatever she was going to say with, I am important. And then she would share whatever she was thinking. And I don't know if that helped her or not, but it was sure fun. <laughs> <laughs> So as we present tonight, I think it would just there you make go. sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me explain one more thing. <laughs> While she stands there. While she stands there. When, when did we do the identity prayer? Was it last week? Last, last week. week. Last week? Mm -hmm. So at the Friday. end of, I think it was the end of last week. Friday. Friday, um, we gave them an assignment of writing an identity prayer. And it was based on two things that we worked on during the Summer of Sonship. One was 
back at near the very beginning of it, we wrote all the characteristics that described Jesus as a son. We just wrote Jesus at the top, son of God, and I had them just popcorn. We wrote it all up the board, all the characteristics of Jesus' sonship to his father. And then after that was done, I asked them to pick out their five struggling ones and their five strongest ones. And I even think, didn't we do an exercise where I had you guys communicate with people that you saw those characteristics in, text mm -hmm. them, write them, something like that? Yeah. Just yeah. to honor them? Yeah, I thought we did that. Okay. So I took those five they picked that were kind of strong characteristics in them, as well as something Autumn did with them a couple weeks later called I am statements. Do you want to describe what those are? With an I am list, you list out everything that you recognize is true about yourself. I am courageous. I am patient. I am noble. You write out all of the things that you recognize are good and true about yourself. And then you bolster, it bolsters your confidence of recognizing who you really are, who you are really need to be, and you start walking in it. So it's called an I am list. You go through everything you know to be true positively about yourself. Mm -hmm. So these guys had a list, a paper, I don't know how long yours was, I saw Courtney's, and it was like 40-something words about herself that were all positive and uplifting. And so I had, her, I had uh, each one of them take that I am list and their five sun characteristics that they felt like they were their strongest, and then I had them go be with the Lord for about an hour and write an identity prayer. That prayer, based on 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18, it says that when we behold the Lord, it says that we actually look at the image that we see as if we're looking into a mirror. That's what verse 18 says. And that image that we behold as we're looking at the Lord, we're transformed in the image that we see. And we realized as we were studying that verse that when we look at the Lord, the reflection back to us is the real us that he always wanted to have established in the earth, the one he originally created. And so I said, picture that person. When you go before the Lord, who is that person he shows you as you're before him? Because then the Bible says that we're transformed in his presence into that image that we see. And then the verse before that, verse 17, is the famous verse where it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So now we know that that liberty is really Lauren getting set free from everything that's not her. All the wrong expectations she's put on herself, others have put on herself, all the flesh, all the stuff that doesn't really relate to the real her, and it sets her free. That's what this prayer is about. So you can share whatever you want, but I encourage them to also read their identity prayer to you all tonight. Is that okay? Lauren Gabler. What's the first thing you should say? I am important. That's right. That sounds like a question. I know. Yeah. I am important. There you go. <laughs> okay, so this past couple weeks has been really fun, and I've enjoyed it a lot. And I am extremely grateful for all the people who have been going through this with me. They have helped me, um, they've helped show me who I am, and um, they've, they've just been really supportive, and I'd like to thank all of you who are here for being there. And um, I think one of my favorite parts of this experience was being able to go out on into downtown Chambersburg and we walked around and we had a list of things that we were supposed to say to people or do to people. But like it was just so much fun because we totally like trailed off we stuck to the list, but we trailed off, and we did whatever the Lord showed us to do. And it's just really cool to see how many people um, need, do need you <coughs> and um, are really blessed by you when you do stand up to speak. Um, this has also shown me how to be open and that it's okay to be open and that you don't always have to appear perfect in front of other people. And so, I will read my identity prayer. Um, Dear Papa, you are my Lord and I will sing for you. I praise and thank you for your unconditional love and unending patience you made for me. I thank you for who you made me to be. 
I have a compassionate, caring, loving, trusting heart that allows me to reach out and give others the comfort you gave me. I have the ability not to judge, to see past what people appear to be and know and love them for who they are. I am a leader among my friends and you gave me the, abil the ability to make and keep peace among them as well. I shine in a room full of darkness. I am radiant in this world full of sin. You give me hope when I see nothing. You give me peace when I am in fear and for that I am grateful. I am beautiful because I am yours. I am loyal because I trust in you. I encourage because I don't want other stuff. I declare you because nothing about you should go unnoticed. I am your joy and you are mine. Amen. Woo. I have to give you something so it sounds somewhat official. Congratulations. <laughs> for Diane. Okay. <laughs> so who's, Megan's next? Yeah. All right. Megan Derniak. <laughs> Megan was one of the more entertaining <laughs> students. <laughs> now I think any of my, any of the other guys would say that it was a real joy. Megan was one of the ones that decided the night before. There was there was uh, one or two other people that decided either the night before or the day of <laughs> to join Summer of Sonship. And Megan was a night before one. And uh, I'm really thankful that she did it. I was personally blessed by my own daughter being in it, watching her grow, watching her open up, watching her engage people in the way that I know she can was about as much fun as I've ever had with her these last six weeks. So I've really enjoyed watching her become among other people. And it's my joy to introduce her to you all. Megan Dirty Ash. Oh, yeah, Megan. Woo! So, um, when my dad first asked me if I wanted to do this, I really did not want to do it. Like, I usually like to be lazy and, like, relax during the summer and not do anything. So, I really did not want to do it, and you know that. I did. <laughs> but then I realized that this was something that I probably should do, so I decided to do it. And um, I'm actually really glad that I did it, because it has matured me. Um, um, I learned like I learned um, how to handle conflict and to not put up walls mm. in the midst of it and oh my goodness <laughs> and to repent and to see the other person's side and to not always think that I'm right and I also learned to open up and say what I'm feeling because it is valuable and others need to hear it. Okay, <laughs> now I'm just going to read. My Can I say one other thing? Yeah. Do you remember what you repented of? Remember uh, that day? Yeah. You can share that with them? Is that okay? Okay. So, I thought this was about as mature of a thing as I heard these last six weeks, and it was when Megan stood up and said to everybody, I repent of judging before I know you. Because she, she's good at that. She reads you from the outside, and she's quick to make some judgments, and she realized that about herself. And she told us all that she repents of that, and she wants to change that. And that whole part about being open and allowing someone else to open up to her before she makes those judgments, that, that's really, really big. So I honor you for that before then. Okay, so my identity curve is definitely in the process of getting, yes. I guess, written. Speak. You gotta speak up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, don't, like. Don't judge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I look at someone, I can see them for who they are. And I can look past what the world has spoken over them or what they have said about them and see them how you see them. I, um, I thank you, Lord, that when I walk into a room, I bring joy. I can help a person through tough times just by smiling and being the joy that I am. 
I am bright. My happiness reaches across the whole earth, bringing light to many people. I thank you that I, you give me opportunities to be a leader. I'm a wise, gentle, and strong leader. I am an example of strong yet vulnerable. I have no fear of being in front of this is like what I want. <laughs> I have no fear of being in front of a crowd. When I speak, people listen because your love is flowing right out of me. You send me out into the nations to show you love. I'm not afraid to be adventurous and explore new things. <laughs> I love the safe places you give to me to be real. When I am real, I release many others to do the same. When I am real, people turn to you. And thank you for letting me be real. I am a warrior, a strong, fearless, and bold one. I will fight on many battlefields for freedom. I am fully committed to fighting for you. Where you go, I go. I will always follow you because I know that you're on my side. And through all of this, I am your daughter. I am the daughter of a mighty and loving king. I am royalty. I am a queen. No one can tell me otherwise. I stand up and know that I am yours. Now that I know that I am yours, I can do anything. Dang. Shoot. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. Yeah. That was great. Ooh. So Ethan Naylor um, told me earlier on in the spring that he wasn't doing this because he couldn't. And plus he wanted to go to Costa Rica. And so we had one of those really friendly, nice meetings that uh father and son can have. <laughs> we talked straight and I said, hey, look, I really think you need this. Not only for Costa Rica, but I think for your life. And this guy made some pretty serious sacrifices where he could have been working, could have been doing a lot of other things. And he, he was all in the whole time he was there. Mm -hmm. You were one of the guys that was all in the whole time. And so I honor you as being one of the, you know, the senior people there at this thing, but never making any of the young ones feel like they were less. So I honor you for calling out the greatness in each one of them, giving them the opportunity to shine. Uh, I even loved watching Ethan engage Megan and Megan engage Ethan. It was fun to watch their two personalities tangle because it brought out really good things in both of them. It really did. So Ethan, would you come and share with the group? Welcome him. First of all, I just want to thank this place and uh, all you guys, my family, um, my biological family. Family couldn't be here. I wish my dad would could have been here, but you guys are my family too. And uh, I just want to thank you guys first and foremost. And um, what I learned, man, was it was life changing. Um, I learned that you know there was a lot of fronts I put up. There was a lot of things that I had to unlearn just about religion and about myself to, uh, that, that hindered the true me and that hindered the person that God truly wanted to shine. And um, I thank everybody else that was in Sons of Sonship with me that I could, you know what I mean, we could clash with and that they could show me the things that I need revealed about myself that I, I needed to um, bring out of me and for the, the leadership as well. Because I really believe that, you know, they got touched just as much as we did. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was life changing. And this is very important to me because it, I mean, I was on a, I come from a lot of bondage in my life, and then this season of my life, the Lord was truly showing me who He's going to make me to be, and I truly know and believe that I'm going to walk from that and walk into that from this day forward. So, my identity not only speaks of who I am, but whose I am. I am a king. I boast in this because I acknowledge the king of all kings. 
who bestowed his crown on me. I wear his robes of righteousness, seal of identity, and sandals of love and truth, which were seized from me before I knew they were mine to bear. Upon a tree my perpetuation hung, ravaged, mutilated, unjustly he hung. But I know that is where my victory was won. I wear his blood as war paint, because it is my covering in the day of war. This grace of my king which lies within drives me forward violently, gracefully, unapologetically. He pulled me from my grave and proclaimed over me, my son, no grave could ever hold your body down because my tomb is vacant. So I run, with purpose and precision I run. I fly, with grace and power I fly. I dwell in heavenly places, I swear I'm so high on Jesus, I'll never land, I'll never <coughs> land. But what am I chasing? What do I wish to obtain? I have been chosen. I have been called to reach the unreachable. I have been given a key to unlock captives in the same cell that once held me captive. That key is me. I am the way maker to my King Jesus, my anchor, the lover of my soul. He breathed new life in me. He showed me his scars and said, son, I am your sacrifice. Now go bring your sisters and brothers home and show them there is life in me. Take this purpose and passion, allow it to become you. Never front on the real you. So as a called out son, I promise I will. Flip the script on any child of God you think you knew. White boy, long hair, who speaks of onyx. How ironic. <laughs> you can laugh, it's all right. <laughs> But I promise you this, this is no identity crisis, because at the end of my description, it reads, just as Christ is. I never fit the mold of what I'm expected to be. I'm wild, relentless, at times reckless. I'm kind, I'm gentle. Yes, these are all me. These are all the notes of my beautiful symphony that will echo in eternity. I am a warrior by conviction, I do not give out. I do not give in. I was made in the image of God Almighty to bring him glory and praise in this lifetime and the next. So I need you to listen closely and focus on my text. I will address my former foe. I hear you judgment, condemnation, and shame, but my ears are no longer inclined to you because I see a king who's been forged in the crucible of fire. So whose report should I believe? The pestilence in my ear or the creator of the universe who abides within? So listen closely, judgment, and focus on my text. It might save you and me the irreverence of your judgmental breath. <laughs> but my scars don't write my song. I am a rock, and upon this rock he built his church. And this is no defense, it's a declaration. This is a declaration, a declaration that is a living reality and the world will have seen, known, and heard me. So, listen as I dream. God, if you had a wallet, my picture would be in it. You'd say, hey Moses, hey Noah, come look at my boy. With a smirk and a smile, you'd nudge him. Isn't he something? Because my soul knows it's worth it. No dungeon below, no heaven above could ever separate me from your unquenchable love. I am yours first and last. I wear the colors of the cross. I've been redeemed and clean. Who would have thought that red cross could rehabilitate? How many can say amen to that? Amen. I'm full of holes and scars. My body's marked up. But there's a message in my mess, and it's only this cross that qualifies me to light up a world of darkness. I'm a believer because there's a story that stood the test of time, a story that tells of the extent my Savior was willing to venture in purchasing my soul and inevitably his glory. That glory declares I have been given all power to tread on all the works of the enemy. The Lion of Judah said he was a friend to me. My identity not only speaks of who I am, but whose I am. I am a flower petal. Flower petal. 
Yeah, a flower petal. 2 Corinthians 2.14 But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory, and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. I am a flower petal. I'm here to bring glory to my general and spread his fragrance everywhere I go. That verse is talking about the time and age which Paul was living in, when the Roman legions would march into the city after conquering an enemy in war. And the people would lay flower petals all over the road. And as the horses would march, they would crush these flower petals that would release a fragrance into the air that would bring, ple that would bring pleasure to the general, knowing that his men were victorious. I will live my life as a flower petal to bring glory to my general Jesus Christ and spread the knowledge of him everywhere I go. My life is my opportunity to be as intimate with my father as I possibly can. So the fragrance of the relationship follows me. It leads me. Through my life, the knowledge of him will be spread wherever I go. The beasts in the wild will acknowledge the Jesus in me. It's about every soul. So in closing, Father, give me an eternal perspective on my life. Allow me to align my thoughts, my dreams, my talents, and my treasure to your kingdom. So be it. Thanks. Glad you went first. <laughs> that was awesome. And that totally defined the last six weeks with Ethan. It really did. That was beautiful. I think we've seen aspects of all of that throughout this week. It was really, really good. Awesome. We're going to do the rest of our Summer of Sonship kids on Sunday. So hopefully you can be here. We'll do the rest of them. Good deal? All right. Thanks again, guys.